Uday Varunjikar, Vipul Maheshwari, and Rano Sachdev to come on the dance. And I request uh, Mr. T. P. Rao, who is the Associate uh, President of the Power Association and Senior Advocate, to proceed the session. नीचे देख के जाइएगा। There are certain misnomers about the right to information as if it is something that was evolved very recently and that some people are taking cuttings for it. In Sweden and Finland, the year 2006 was observed as the 240th anniversary of freedom of information. 240th anniversary of freedom of information. The world's first freedom of information legislation 
was adopted by the British, by the Swedish Parliament in the year 1766. Long back, thinker and politician Andres Chaginius from Finnish city of Kokola played a crucial role in creating the new law. So now you can you can very well fathom that even after our independence in 1947, <coughs> it took how many years first this the, the, the whole concept to be adopted and then to be enacted. So it is not as if this is something that was invented for us just recently. What is important for every democracy, friends, and according to me, democracy means equality. There cannot be democracy without equality. As equality serves to protect the dignity and freedom of individuals. Even in the preamble of the RTI Act 2005, in their area, there is a statement and I would like to read that. Democracy requires an informed citizenry and transparency of information which are vital to its functioning and also to contain corruption and to hold governments and their instrumentalities accountable to the governed. Over the last 40 years, there has been a dramatic increase in the number of countries that have adopted freedom of information laws. A milestone was the US Freedom and Information Act of 1966, which many countries subsequently emulated. And according to a global survey, about 70 countries have adopted comprehensive freedom of information acts, and about 50 countries have legislation which are pending. Now, how much information can decision makers entrust citizens with is a very, very important question. The answer to this question, friends, relates directly to the basic constituents of any political entity. In a modern society, decision making must be based on political will of the enlightened citizens, which is expressed through votes and election. In such a society, transparency should be ruled and secrecy the exception. Citizens should be interested with as much access to information as possible. Now, in the Indian context, the whole recorded struggle, let me inform you, you may already know it, it began in the year 1987 in a very small town in the state of Rajasthan known as Dev Dungri in the state of Rajasthan. The region was experiencing severe drought and they were having, they, they, were, they had collected huge funds to fight the drought but the basic problem was that they were not distributing the wages to the Mazdoors. Now these Mazdoors in 1987 took up the cuttles and subsequently with their protests they were able to get the, 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 the villagers and the Mazdoors they sat on protest and ultimately the government yielded and they showed them all the muster rolls etc. as to who were the people who were to be given wages etc. So this was the real beginning in 1987. We are also aware that Supreme Court time and again has been emphasizing since the days of the case of Rajnarayan, state of UP versus Rajnarayan in 1975 and then subsequently in the case of Dinesh Trivedi, the Supreme Court had been laying stress and asking the government that you must come out with the act which is the Right to Information Act. Now, as a first step, the National Campaign for People's Right did all the work, which subsequently the National Advisory Council made the, the drafts, the suggestions, etc., and subsequently these formed the basis of the subsequent right to information bill which was introduced in the parliament on 22nd December 2004. After even the bill was introduced, friends let me tell you over a hundred amendments were made in the parliament. More than hundred amendments were called for 
and thereafter only the act was enacted and came into force on 13th of October 2005. So you can imagine how long it took for the enlightened parliamentarians, our chosen representatives to give us this act with what difficulty. Now coming to the basic question, it is now clear that we have in place the Right to Information Act 2005 and you can see the, see the legislation, you, you can read the statute, you are all advocates, you must have had an occasion to look at it. Does it require dilution or further strengthening is the hallmark of today's, today, to today's session. Let me take you through a small journey from 2005 onwards as up till date, what is it that has caused the hurdles in the way of this act? Let me briefly tell you one by one what has happened without giving you a, a, a broad, <coughs> broad theoretical aspect of it. Let me give you the practical aspect and I will give it to you in seriatim one by one. <coughs> many cases of, number one, many cases of penalty and disclosure are challenged in the high courts. Therefore, the applicant, the common man, has to suffer for a long pendency and delay in the higher courts. Now, can you imagine that if you apply in any, any government or any public authority for some information which is not given to you and you go to the central information center and thereafter you, an appeal is filed in the high court and it will take 10 to 12 years by the high court to decide that appeal. So, therefore, the very purpose of the act is chilled. Number two. More and more agencies being included under the second schedule. Now, this is very, very important. Kindly mark this. More and more agencies being included under the second schedule of the RTI Act, which covers intelligence and security organizations and exempts them from the operation of the Act. This is leading to unnecessary dilution of the RTI Act, and I will, I will, I will demonstrate how. Government issued a notification on 9th of June 2011 following a decision of the Union Cabinet amending the second schedule to the RTI Act to include three more organizations thus taking the total number of exempted public authorities from original 80 to 25. The newly exempted public authorities friends are Central Bureau of Investigation the National Investigating Agency and the National Intelligence Grid. Now you can you can fathom that that there are investigating agencies which are operating in many many organizations. For example, in the army we have an investigating agency. The police is an investigating agency, and already there in the act those those public authorities which are dealing with our national integrity and sovereignty aspect, they are already out of it. So from 18 they made it, now 25. Now the next aspect is very important. <coughs> Joint ventures and departmental organizations established as trusts or registered under the Companies Act claim that they are not covered under the Act. The Chief Information Commissioner very recently ordered the Indian Council of World Affairs under the Ministry of External Affairs to, be des to designate a CPIO and declare that it was a public authority under the RTI Act. This only shows that an organization which ought to have fallen in place in the year 2005 got covered under the Act after a period of six years. Well, friends, we are all familiar with the Supreme Court and the High Courts. The Supreme Court of India itself denied that it is not covered under the Act. And we all know that ultimately the Delhi High Court had to pronounce a judgment and the judgment is also under, the, under, under challenge because they say that they are not public authorities because they are, the, they are constitutional authorities whereas the Act does not say so. The Supreme Court Registry has recently challenged the Delhi High Court's judgment under the Central Information Commission's decision declaring it to be a public authority. Thus, this also establishes how certain institutions which are law making authorities themselves registered for a number of years they are, are preventing the enforcement of this act. For example, now I give a very small example but it is very relevant. 
The Delhi High Court now charges under the rules which they have framed rupees 500 to be rupees 500 to accompany an application made under the RBI Act. Rupees 500. Whereas the Act says rupees 10. The Supreme Court itself says now in its rules rupees 10. But Delhi High Court says rupees 500. Now see the extent of where they are going. The right to information mentions clear cut timelines for replying to an application but once an appeal is made to the CIC, now this is very very important and mark this, no time limit is followed. We are all aware that, that if you file an application for a certain information, within 30 days you will get a reply. If it is a question of uh, something involving uh, a person's life, then it has to be done within 48 hours. But suppose you are denied that information and you file an appeal before the CIC, Dear friends, it can be held up for a very long period, it can be even a year or two. And experience has shown that people who wanted certain medicines to save their lives, they could not get them to which they were entitled to from hospitals and this resulted in their death and the appeals are still pending. It is also shocking today as to how many, how many appeals have gathered in the CIC's office and I will just briefly tell you the current levels of pendency in the CIC are glaring and shocking. The projected estimates at even below average growth rate would lead to the pendency of over 80,000 cases by, to, by, by 2016. So what are we creating? We are creating another parallel system to the courts where you are not going to get any relief. The information commissioners, now, now please mark this another very important thing. The information commissioners who are appointed, they are appointed in a secretive manner. We all know there is one chief, inform chief information commissioner who is assisted by 10 other information commissioners. Now till today, they are all appointed in a secret manner. There has been, there has been only one person who is a non-bureaucrat who has been appointed till date. Only one, Mr. Selesh Gandhi, is the only person till today who has been appointed who is not non-bureaucrat. Despite several open letters from the Chief Information Commissioner, the Prime Minister and the Minister of DOPT, the CIC functions with an outsourced staff. Now please, please, please uh, understand this. They don't have their own staff. They have to get staff which they have to outsource from some other sources and then with a very few, very few trained personnel who can help. And you would be further shocked to know that from sending out a notice to the actual completion of the case is done by the commissioner himself. This is the shocking state of affairs. The efforts of the DOP to create a new set of rules in the 2006 whereby the essential file notings, now about file notings we know, they all said no file notings will be shown, would have been exempted from disclosure, was thwarted by concerned citizens. Thereafter in 2011, a new set of rules were proposed, proposed which allowed the public information officer the discretion to decide as to which application is whimsical and dismiss the same, apart from leaving various types of charges on the information so supplied. Thus openly or covertly, the authorities have been trying to dilute the RTI Act, which is still in its infancy. There is yet one other very disturbing factor which I have to bring to your notice, which needs to be highlighted. And that is the personal harassment of the activists who are today coming forward and seeking information. Let me briefly tell you, the Right to Information Act was ena enacted to promote transparency and accountability in the working of every public authority. You will be shocked to know that a dangerous nexus has been formed with the corrupt to silence the RTI activists and since, I will just give you the figure and you can imagine, since 2010, at least 12 RTI activists have been murdered for seeking information to promote transparency and accountability in working of the public authority. You are all aware of the case of Ms. Sheila Masood, 
and also a police constable himself who sought information from a tehsildar